My name is Esther Regueira. I am the general coordinator of Manifesta 8, an edition, last edition of Manifesta that is taking place in Murcia and in Cartagena, Spain. Um, Manifesta is a biennial of European contemporary art that since it started 15 years ago in Rotterdam has been changing the city in every edition. Um, it has a peculiarity that since the very beginning is looking for new strategies and new ways of production and presentation of contemporary art. So in this edition that will take place in, in October 2nd in Spain, in Murcia and Cartagena, um, uh, Manifesta has uh, taken the risk to uh, collaborate not with curators but with three collective of curators, um, ACAF, Alexandria uh, Cham uh, Contemporary Arts Forum, um, CPS, Chamber of Public Secrets, and Transit. Uh, we have Georg Scholhammer um, and Alfredo Crameotti. Uh, uh, Georg is from Transit and Alfredo is from CPS. And I will pass the word to them uh, maybe to explain a little bit the projects and then we can go through uh, questions and answers if you want. So uh, Alfredo Crameotti from CPS. Um, okay, as a, um, as a collective, uh, uh, we, we, we work as a collective since 2004, um, uh, starting in uh, Copenhagen and then the Middle East and uh, other places as well, doing uh, media production, art exhibition, film festival, publication, etc. Um, and our, I mean, we were quite interested in to be, to be part of this project because for us uh, it's really relevant to to explore some power to experiment uh, um, what is um, a concern since long time from us nice. um, which is basically the um, I would say the interaction between uh, artistic practice and and mass uh, media information processes and um, Murcia um, well, it's it's it, first of all, it's not it's not a bubble. It's uh, it's a region that it's uh, pretty much uh, interconnected with everything else on a global scale as well. It's on the border of Europe, uh, facing the Mediterranean, facing Northern Africa, which was one of the um, let's say the, the points of the um, Manifesta board, or so to um, to bring Manifesta there. And uh, we uh, somehow we position ourselves first, and uh, we started to. Um, to be there and to talk with a lot of people, not only uh, the local art scene, but also um, the, the, the media, for instance, production structures of the region, and uh, NGO association and also governmental offices, a, a bit of everything actually of the reality going on in, uh, in the region. And then from there we started to expand actually our research, first to the, to the um, to, to Spain and then to Europe and then englobing uh, ultimately Northern Africa and the Middle East. And, um, and since it's not that it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bubble, it's, uh, we started to think about what is the uh, main uh, elements that constitute uh, the contemporary relationship of a region like Murcia with uh, um, the rest, actually, which is includes Northern Africa and, uh, and the relationship with, with all the, the, the other places in the world. And, uh, and that's why we were focused, really, to involve um, the mass media outlets, and not just to involve in terms of uh, providing an alternative point of view to television and radio or uh, to, uh, to be complementary to, uh, to them, but to actually work with them to somehow to expand their the remit of uh, what are the public uh, um, structure to construct our reality day by day. The basic thought uh, is that history is uh, it's, it's not a given, is uh, constructed and, and is constructed day by day. So our reality, what we consider our reality, it's, uh, it's formed on a daily basis and is formed through our experiences and uh, uh, but most of it also through what we construct from uh, the, re the reception we have from, from the information um, channels, let's say. 
So we were keen to explore what was the historical relationship uh, between uh, a local reality and, uh, and history, but what also is uh, the contemporary relationship between uh, the region and, and the rest of the globe, really. And we do it mainly through um, public television, through public radio, through newspapers, the two major newspapers, uh, to, uh, through internet, uh, a public internet platform, through a number of magazines. So half of our contributors, uh, we invited 30 contributors, 30, let's say, yeah. It's not, they're not really all of them artists, half of them are artists, half of them are different practitioners, uh, ranging from documentary filmmaker to scientist to writer to uh, uh, neuropsychiatrist. And, uh, and we invite them to work uh, not only on the notion of the, of the media um, so-called so representation, but also construction and constitution of our reality, but also to work with them. And uh, for us, it was really, really um, an important issue to create the context and to open up this space uh, in order for these um, contributors to, to, to bring in what is their expertise and their point of view and their content somehow. Um, the content is generated from, from the contributor themselves, is not generated by us. Um, we create the structure somehow. And that's uh, our take, let's say, on uh, uh, making sense of mm. Manifesta being there. And, uh, and it's also our take on uh, uh, experiment pretty much with the uh, um, format biennial and the format exhibition itself, um, sort of expanding, not, not renegating the exhibition because it's not the point. I mean, we are part of the art system and, mm -hmm. and it's fine. We, we like it. I think it's a good opportunity, uh, but we also try to expand it. Uh, using the, this, these structures. I think I can pass the word to you now. <laughs> well, thanks, Alfredo. You've said already a lot about, so to say, the region. Actually, for us, we are a collective that is not really something like a collective of uh, totally friendship issues, but it's a collective of values and needs and sharing some perspectives on the art world that is operating across borders in Central Europe, so even across uh, uh, former systems and across a region that did not know much about each other uh, uh, like almost the last uh, 40, 50 years. It was really a challenge to get invited to one of these biennials that is not just another biennial, but somehow had done a lot for the self-recognition of the region. I mean, uh, remembering Manifesto's history, which is this, for those who don't know, which is this meandering uh, uh, and uh, walking biennial that walks throughout Europe since the mid-90s. Manifesto has done a lot, actually, for Eastern Europe, for Southeastern Europe to get, so to say, us ourselves acquainted to each other and to make Eastern European contemporary art practice or Central European contemporary art practices uh, known to a wider audience. So, for us, uh, it uh, being selected as one of, of 20 yeah. collectives uh -huh. that have been asked to write proposals for this show, uh, it was not just something, but it was uh, thinking about actually what one could contribute uh, with that experience that we had to somehow two institutes that we find are highly in danger. The one is the Institute of the Biennial itself. I mean, it's proliferating. Everybody has its biennial. We have talked through that since the uh, 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 beginning of the millennium that there is uh, something like uh, th 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 this institute is getting worn out a bit. Yeah. And the second is uh, the institute that the biennial always ends in, namely the group show. Huh? Uh, uh, whatever you uh, consider to be, it in the end is a, a, a more or less refined group show. What Manifesta allowed us now is to really think about these things under a certain frame. I mean, there's a th there's been a, a theoretical frame that has been posed uh, to, to us, which the Manifesta board, which selected us to join in the curatorial, uh, uh, has uh, put upon us, which is Europe in dialogue with North Africa. A strange or a rather complicated narrative, I would say. You, know? you would have to consider what is Europe what mm, is North mm. Africa, what is a dialogue. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there always has been channels of uh, 
uh, communications and so on between these two regions, but it's rather complicated, even considering that there is European uh, uh, perspectives on this region in a wider scale of European Union hegemony. Whatsoever, we took it, we took it because of we thought actually challenging these two perspectives is still a possibility and there is not so many uh, initiatives around that would allow you to do so. Mm -hmm. So we started to do both of these things. And in uh, thinking about closer about uh, uh, the Institute of the Group show and where it came from, uh, uh, we came again back to that what the collective is, so to say, because of somehow yeah. group shows came out of collective practices and of the salon. Huh? So yeah. there is yeah. two ways group shows are coming, uh, uh, coming into, so to say, the art world, the salon and collective practices. We have been thinking much more about the post war avant garde and there it has been collective practices. Mm -hmm. And suddenly this collective practice is defunded into our Kunstvereins, into museums, even into, into biennials and group shows are that what nobody knows what it is but always happens. So we thought, why not consider this institute really together with the ones that are doing it? Like an experiment from the beginning. So what we have been uh, uh, developing with the 30 artists that we invited in our uh, part, uh, so to say, part of, the, uh, ma of this manifesto is really uh, uh, talking about what a constitution of such a show could be. What does it mean to be together for a cer under a certain umbrella, uh, uh, under a certain curatorship, with a certain agenda for a certain period of time in a certain space? So we questioned that from, so to say, very abstract and theoretical uh, proposals to the very uh, uh, basic things like the budgets. So we asked, our in, uh, uh, we asked the artists, for instance, well, there is a certain budget, there is a transparency, there is usually always this opacity in between the one who gives the money, the one who uh, uh, do, does the project, and all these hidden relations. We, we, want, we wanted to open that so simply, and we started to discuss from these basics to the general. And we found, uh, and now we are amidst a, a beautiful process of commonality, of sharing, of, so to say, uh, uh, debate, of controversy, of disagreement with the artists. And the artists really enjoy, I have to say. I mean, some of the artists really come and say, it has been the first time. I've been in so many group shows, but it's been the first time that somebody invited us five months before to get to know each other, to know whom we are working in the space to think about sharing the space and to think about the conditions of all that what we are in. So ours was not so much about site specificity in a way that you come identify a problem, identify an artist that is dealing with the problem and mediate that then to something like a, 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 a practice, but about ourselves because if we thought it might be quite funny in all these institutionalized and uh, atomized art worlds to think about collectivity <coughs> from within this strange Institute of the Group Show. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Can you uh, tell us, Alfredo, because I know the process has been very different. Your collective, you are two people, meanwhile Transit are five people, yeah. and still they have, uh, as he just explained, he, they have they have opened a discussion to the artists, so they have had like a deep process of discussion through the whole time, but can you tell us a little bit about the well, process we went, of your uh, work? Well, we went through um, um, a similar process actually in terms of uh, time and uh, because we when we wanted to uh, we had this idea when when we were actually doing the research uh, kind of a spiraling out of our research we met um, a lot of people and somehow several points popped up and uh, and that point through these people through the artists the producer became somehow the content and uh, and by um, having uh, this kind of a production system that it involves different uh, structures, like not art venues, not art system, not art production, but television and radio newspaper. That involves um, a huge negotiation process, not b by us, first of all, but by the artists themselves. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So our artists actually started to work uh, uh, back in uh, February, in January and February, so almost a year in advance uh, in the location, uh, because I would say, 95% of our production are uh, based locally, and they take place locally, uh, because when, when you enter this, another sort of a system, when art enter a, a sort of a, a relationship of uh, mutual dependence with another system, 
uh, you cannot just import things. It's, uh, it has to deal with ups and downs. It has to deal with negotiation um, processes and, and, uh, and ways of doing things and compromises as well and, and pushing and pulling. So it's, uh, it was, uh, a, it, it still is a very, very long process because the, the people we invited actually are there uh, um, now and they were there actually previously in order to create this sort of a context and create these spaces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also because when you do media production, you don't do media production in your studio, you do media production with someone else, with some other situation. So you obviously, it, it relates to the social context there uh -huh. and the political uh -huh. context and the geocultural context, if you want. Um, so it was, it was a very, very long process, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we did. It's still, it still is a hell process. of a lot of work, I have to say. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it's still very complicated. I'm not denying it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you know. <laughs> I perfectly know that. We're uh, in the but process. But I think it's still, uh, it's, it's worth. It's it, really it, it, worth. It, it. And it's, it's, I think a baenia like this, it's, it's actually uh, the right context to, to try out certain things, actually. That's, Otherwise, in a more mm -hmm. uh, established, or not established, but in a, in a kind of more coded institution, like the one I work with, for instance, uh -huh, which is uh -huh. a public institution, publicly funded, uh, you cannot do it. Because you have certain criteria to which you are evaluated, being football, being kind of a media space with revenue or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's very difficult. You have always to balance. And this one is, uh, is, is something that it's, it's kind of a very refreshing for possibly for, for us and for, for the artists and for the, for the population of Murcia because yeah. some, ultimately the media production are television program, radio program and newspapers that people there read every day. So it's, uh, there will be also some mediation structure like two media lounges, one in Murcia and one in Cartagena, which all the media content is also available in English, for instance, for uh, the visitors that are not Spanish speaking or they're not living there actually. So they will be available for three months, of course, for the duration of the biennial. Uh, but uh, I think it's important to, to, to have this focus as well. Yeah, just a brief date for you to understand the complexity of this project, project in which you are involved. We are having like around, uh, I think, 90, uh, around 100 artists, but we're using uh, 12 different venues between Murcia and Cartagena. Uh, five of them are, are, are the spaces, let's call, but uh, the rest of them are buildings that we are uh, refurbishment in order to use it you know, for, for these purposes. So it's like an interaction between different disciplines, architects, uh, local and from abroad, artists, uh, people from media, as Alberto said, uh, Alfredo said, sorry. And something interesting also for me is that this manifesto is involving also a lot of performance and dance and theater, which I think is new from previous manifestos, a bit, a bit different. And uh, also I would like to talk, maybe jo uh, Georg can talk about it a bit, a bit, because in some of the collectives, there are people who are not curators, uh, let's say professional curators, but more art artists or readers or writers or poets, like in your case, yeah. right? Which I think is interesting also, the discussion that you are having in between, right? Well, I think Jens Hoffman is just coming after us here. And uh, 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 what he uh, asked docume last document to do, to be curated by an artist is a practice in our collective since, <laughs> yeah, yeah. since it exists because of some of the uh, uh, transit people are really artists. And uh, so they're, 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 this division of labor that has, uh, that has established somehow uh, had not existed in, in parts of that world that we have, uh, had been in aware when we started. So it was, uh, it was obvious that a generation of artists took care of art histories, so to say. Yep. So for, for instance, the transits in Czech Republic and in Slovakia have done a major effort to, to work around like pe people like Julius Koller or Yeshi Kovanda, who now are uh, like uh, one of the, uh, so, so to say, the incunables of, of uh, the uh, art history of uh, post-war uh, Eastern Europe uh, since, the, since the 60s. So, so this, uh, this is one thing. The other thing is that, uh, well, we as well took the risk of uh, uh, taking this as really a production frame, not just as a representative frame. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. all of the projects that we are producing there are produced for the site, are produced for manifesto. You know, that's quite risky and tricky when you're a curator uh, because if you actually, uh, the, the time is rather short, you don't always know what you get 
and you have to invest a lot. It's not just taking things and putting them uh, together and on this place. So we really thought about uh, uh, this, this, this place as a place of production. And then we thought over what we could do to that strange theme of North Africa and, uh, 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 and, and Europe. And uh, then we found out that actually, uh, some, in a certain sense, North Africa is in a, a rather similar situation than uh, Central Europe was in the well, 90s and early 2000s. Uh, the artscapes that just had been released into something like more uh, visibility uh, from, a, uh, from a, a, a rather opaque regime did not know about each other. So it's like if you travel in Northern Africa and you travel to Morocco, people would ask you, coming from, for instance, Libya, people would ask you, what did you see in Libya? What's going on in Libya? So this is just a new thing, that there is an awareness of what that might be, this North Africanness, maybe, or whatsoever. But it's still a very uneven region. And on the other hand, there's been a lot of channels in between the avant-garde from the 50s on, or for instance, Morocco and Spain, or Morocco and... Uh, uh, the, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and France, the, uh, for example. Well, France or mm. even the New York avant-garde had a mm. lot of projections towards that region. Uh, in in uh, Algeria was a, lib uh, was a cinema laboratory where not just Godard thought about that the Nouvelle Vague would uh, be well uh, received in the, in the Cinematheque, but where, where there was really the meeting place of the Moscow and the and, uh, uh, Nouvelle Vague cinema. So there is a lot of channels that one can open and suddenly uh, it's not just about this obvious excludedness and includedness that we tackle as well, because if there is obvious, it's obvious that there are borders and that there are people drowning and that there is an exclusion and Spain has a special role, so to say, uh, in, in, in all that uh, migrating problem. But on the other hand, there is channels that one can open that somehow uh, 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 enable one to think about these communications in a different way. Way and this is uh, the way much more uh, that we uh, think about dealing with that uh, subject of Europe and North Africa, not leaving all the other problematic issues that are political issues, social issues, uh, uh, and uh, sometimes even cultural issues out. Uh, how was the response of this? Or oh, maybe shall we maybe offer the questions? Should, uh, yeah. We should ask if there are some questions from the public. Is there any question? No? One. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it, it's really like we are sitting in the clouds here. Yeah, you we don't, don't, you don't really other. see anything. It's, uh, uh, it's <laughs> the <laughs> obvious opacity of the is stage. It? Okay, it is. Um, I've been told to speak really loud. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somehow we try to. There is a lot of echo. Um, it's not a question, it's just a comment. Uh, it's very refreshing to hear that you're starting from the local and then sort of expanding from that place. And also to hear that you're working with production as a framework. It's, it's, okay, sorry. Yeah. It wasn't a question. It, no, and I said it wasn't <laughs> sorry, a question. Sorry. No, I just, um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm responding to uh, a, 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 an emphasis on the local, the relationship between the local first and then the global. And I, it's just something I really appreciate because it's not always there. Yeah, but it's a simple consideration because whatever is very local, it's, it's also universal. I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's very, it's kind of a, it's, there is this sort of, I was talking about mutual dependence first between arts and the other system, but it's the same thing with social, social issue and political issue that there's, it, it's so much interconnected, the, the society and the world today, that it's really difficult to separate things, really. Mm. So I think it's, it, has, it has to be, a, you have to be aware about when you do something, any sort of a location. I mean, curating the local is something rather specific, you know, coming from the outside and trying to enter the local, which always seems to be transparent, yeah? Uh, for the ones that take part in the local, it is not because of its filled with power relation. And if you come there as a curator, the first hand that you shake of an artist or an institution uh, person is the wrong hand, because if you don't know what hand you shake and what communications uh, are, are, are about, I mean, every artscape is filled with uh, with all with all of these narratives. So uh, the local for us is a, a totally different, so to say, uh, uh, substance 
uh, uh, then to tackle it, to identify problems, to uh, cast artists that might work around that. For us, it's really the local of ours, uh, of our communications uh, uh, within uh, within uh, certain milieus, and it's even with the audiences is like that. There is very trained audiences <laughs> in Murcia. Murcia has the most uh, fancy uh, uh, film studies. I, I mean, it's the, it's it's a, it's a heroic place for queer and gay film studies in the world, and so on. So there is a lot of locals that you can touch and where you immediately get channeled into. And there is other locals like a rather populist rightist politics that you won't get. The want, uh, that, that you just uh, see as a European condition that's, that's developed, developing in Murcia as well. So we thought about the local much more as us and the temporary space and how we relate it to the audiences. And in another way, the local belong to the international. Murcia is not a part of the international scene, you know. This, this whole discussion between local and global is very tricky and the three collectives have approached it in a very different ways. But what is true is like Murcia as well as any other city is part of the international scene. On the other hand, it's a region full of possibilities, you know. It's, uh, it, it's yeah. as always, full of contradictions, full of possibilities, wonderful. Uh, a, a region that micro mirrors Europe in a way, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. the, the, the very difference between the two cities, Murcia and Cartagena, is kind of a stunning, really. They're really two completely different cities, two completely different environments as well. So, so just, just to, to position you yourself in the two cities, <coughs> it feels very, very different. To give you an idea about, sorry. Well, okay. more, well, no, no, yeah. no, come on. it's um, the, the question was, what's the difference between the two cities? Um, Cartagena has been uh, strategically important military wise from, you know, kind of a Roman and Phoenician time and still the main uh, uh, military harbor uh, of Spain and, and NATO as well. It's an industrial, it was a former industrial city, uh, a natural harbor, former industrial, former, a lot of kind of a um, decadence now and kind of a uh, run down. Um, that's a goal. <laughs> and <laughs> and the Murcia instead is much more um, kind of a, I wouldn't say kind of a baroque city, much more rich, much more enjoyable if you want. And uh, I was talking with a professor of the history professor at the university and he told me that during the Frankist time, uh, the, Fran the Frankismo, um, that the population was referring to the two cities as uh, uh, if Cartagena was Moscow, Murcia was the Vatican. Just yeah. to give you <laughs> an impression. I'm not a local historian. For me, the difference is in Murcia, we're having an exhibition venue. In Cartagena, we're playing on a stage. <laughs> yeah. So. I just want to know more than the geographical and cultural conditions of each, each city, how it affects each personality in the development of your projects and the culture that It affects a lot, actually, because the artists, actually, the people we met that they, and they provided these points to, to discuss, uh, somehow they were really related to, uh, to specific issues. Um, I don't know, in Cartagena we uh, found and we put it on the map somehow because it wasn't there at the beginning, an old prison that it was closed since ages and it was uh, constructed it in the 20s as a community prison where a lot of families uh, of, uh, of the prison were living around it. So they have kind of this com common Christmas dinner and Easter party, etc., etc. And then it became a political prison during the regime. And now it's, it's basically closed, it's not accessible. So we kind of afford it to reopen this place and to be part, you know, to, to bring in the community. And there are a number of artists working in this place and with the place, really. Uh, and just not with the place, but also bringing the place, some kind of a, a bring, bringing to surface the history of the place, the perception of the place, etc. And that's just one example. Thank you very much. They are telling me we have to cut. So there are some press releases sure. here, little notebooks, if you want to take them. And um, if you need any more information, uh, or if you want to talk to us, we're going to be around. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.